Good morning, evening, or afternoon, everybody. It's Kago coming at you with another video. So today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to pre-quest to get to level 27 as soon as Phase 2 launches as a Horde character. Now, Horde is significantly more difficult than Alliance because Alliance has the beauty of the Stormwind Stockades quests, which give them a lot more XP than... Uh, Horde gets really is at level 25 and about n pretty much 99% of players won't be able to get 27 as Horde because it requires a very very specific path that you have to take and essentially you had to not get pre bis gear not do the raid and not turn in those quests but you can get to about 60,000 of the 70,400 XP that is required to get to level 27 so yeah, it should be pretty good. That'll be about 80% to 90% of the level into 26 to 27. But before we get into the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Everything you guys do helps my channel grow, helps me get discovered, and helps me help as many people as possible. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So the entire path that we are going to take, I'm just going to walk you through exactly what you need to do and these name all the quests you need to get some of these are chains so i'll do my best to point those out but the very first place you're going to do is be is hills brad foothills you're going to log out at Terran mill the night before phase two launches and then you're going to have elixir of agony complete souvenirs of death dangerous and battle for hills brad but the one that has you go to the mine which i believe is the fourth one in the chain all the other ones previous you'll do and this will yield you the xp that you see listed there next we are going to then hearth to ashenvale to splinter tree post and you you would have it at zorm strand but zorm strand does not have a uh, hearth to do it at so that's just unfortunate but now we are going to hearth here to Ashenvale, and we will be turning in the next line of quests. Now, a few of these are chains or escorts from uh, further away areas. But once you're here in Splinter Tree, you're going to turn in Freedom to Raoul, which you got from doing the escort in this cave all the way over here. Stone Talon Standstill, which is killing the elementals at that area. Torex Assault, which is one of the very first quests you do upon entering Ashenvale, but it yields a lot of XP. And then you're going to turn in Satyr Horns right here, which is killing 16 or getting 16 Satyr Horns from a ton of killing. Then you go further down and turn in War Song Supplies if you did not complete this for your pre -bis. Um and then also once you've started the Ashenvale hunt, this is a very important part and what makes this so good is the fact that you can hunt the animals and you can have the their heads in your thing and it does not take up your quest log. As you can see, Questy still shows uh, Shade Rumbra's head, it shows uh, Ursan's paw, and then I actually messed up here with the uh, water, befelled water globe you you could have this in your bag and then you accept it after you've turned in the tarn mill ones and then it'll give you a quest to go over here to the earthen ring we're headed to zorm strand next so there's a quest there called troll charms that you should not have turned in i turned it in and messed up on this character but this will yield you about 2000 more xp if you do it this way so do not accept the befouled water globe quest or any of these head quests at all but if, when we're turning in all of our quests, once you've done Tarn Mill, you can accept these quests. You turn them all in here. You go do Warsong Supplies. And then the next step would be um, if you do get the Ruined Scroll, you can accept this. And after you turn in Warsong Supplies, you can go down to the border here, turn that one in, and then run back to Splinter Tree Post. And then we are going to go and fly to uh, Zhramgar Outpost, which we would turn in Vorash the Lasher, King of the Foul Wield, and the Earthen Ring quest here. Then we would also go ahead and turn in uh, Troll Charms, which I do not have because I said I messed it up. But after we fly there, turn in those quests. If you did not 
go here to the rune scroll, you'd fly to back to Splinter, Tr Splinter Tree Outpost, run down there, turn that in, and then continue running to the crossroads to turn in Betrayal from within. This is the final quest in the Quillmore chain. Um, it gives 3,000 XP, and it is phenomenal. Um, but a lot of people end up doing this quest during their leveling, so you might not have it, you might have it, I don't really know. Um, but you would then fly to Camp T and turn in Weapons of Choice, which will give you 2k rep. And then you are also going to turn in all of these animal heads that we have collected. You have the Tail Spike, you have the Hoof, and you have the Feather. Now, an important thing to note, one of the hardest ones to get is the Harvester. If you are able to get this, it will give you 2.4k XP. However, the Harvester is a very rare spawn. Same with this Ruined Scroll. You have to find Aeon Swift River, which it makes it a pack of four of elites because she is like a rare spawn in the rare spawn group. So as long as you see uh, Aeon Swift River there, you can definitely get this quest. Um, I would recommend just waiting around Camp T, pulling them, and then running them into Camp Terrain as long as you do 50% uh, or 60% uh, or 40% of the damage to her, which you definitely can. They're not very threatening or lethal if you're running into Camp T guards. Um, the Camp T guards are level 40, so they will beat her uh, pretty quickly and all of her companions. I was able to solo it on my mage. Um, but anyway, after you go there and you turn in all the heads and everything, you are then going to fly down to 1,000 needles. You are going to turn in Windrider. You are going to turn in Wanted uh, Arnak Grim Totem, Pacify the Centaur, and Free at Last. These are uh, four quests, really easy. Uh, they do, I believe, Pacifying the Centaur will lead to a chain that has you go to the Grim Totem people. Um, you can go ahead and accept those if you plan on questing because you will want to be down here in Thousand Needles anyway. That's why it's our end path. Um, then you will accept the Assassination Plot. This is another item that you can just sort of have in your questing log. And you will, uh, you know, it is right here. Uh, you just kill the messenger and you'll be able to get this quest. Upon accepting that, you will then go to... Um, you will then head over here to these three people where you can turn in three quests. Um, this was the escort that you'll do when you're getting the eggs here. It's pretty easy. Um, just be careful at the end. It spawns three wyverns. Then you can turn in the gizmo right here, which is an elite quest. Definitely get a group to do this. Um, it can be really nice. But at this point, you will be at level 26. Something very important that people might not know is red quests, so quests that are five or higher levels, give reduced XP. So this 3,050 number is not accurate because it is red right now. Upon digging 26 and turning in this red quest, you will get more than 3,050 XP for this quest. Also an important thing, if you have assassination plot, turn this in last because when you turn it in at this uh, post, it spawns mobs and you have to defend the guy so he does not die. So just FYI, be aware of that because I would hate for you guys to just not be aware of that and get assassinated. But anyway, that is the path I'm going to take. Doing this will yield you 60,000 of the 70,000 XP you need. Um, in order to truly get 27 as Horde, you have to do a lot of obnoxious, really hard things. And essentially, you had to not play the game or build a character specifically for this. But in order to do that, there's a quest chain that is over here in um, Stonetown Mountains. It's Scenarius' it's legacy, but it leads to the Den, which everyone who uses agility did this for Prebus. So it might be a little hard to do it, and that's why I didn't include it in my run through here but it does reward enhanced xp it's like 3k to turn in the final one because it's an elite quest and so you would need to have the din and then this is the main reason why everyone to fail you need to have all three bfd quests to turn in because this uh results in quests that are about 3300 to turn in and so you'll have those three quests which is thousands more xp than any of those that is the main reason why most people won't be able to do this then at every major city if you are truly min maxing you can turn in wool cloth for each faction this will total uh, 650 times uh, 4 if you go to all the cities to turn this in you can just have 60 wool cloth however this quest is doable at all levels so 
be very careful if you want to use your wool turn in right now to do this you can it does reward you a decent amount of xp but you would have two in orgrimmar one in thunder bluff as well as you would have one in undercity to turn in now i wouldn't really recommend that because that is just ridiculous and i would save that towards like level 50 to 60 because the xp scales with your character level but if you want to do it by all means go ahead then finally here to get a, even more xp you can have the battle for hills brad which you can turn it you can go even higher and you can get about 300 more xp but is doing the elite quest here which is really hard because you have to kill a level 32 elite that pulls three or four mobs so it's just really difficult for barely any then a big one is the harvester that we mentioned over here um this is a rare spawn very hard to find but if you do get it that is a big chunk of the xp to get towards 27 then you can also come here and you can get the etched file for the secret flame as well as the steel snap quest these do give more xp than the path i said however i can't get 27 so i was i excluded these two quests even though they give more xp than some of the ones i have because of going out of the way towards thunder bluff for the path that we suggested now if you are super min maxing those are required for you to do this then a lot of people did the blue leaf tuber quest this is also a quest because it is an rfk dungeon quest that gives a decent amount you get it in ratchet um, that is more than these quests and it is enough to push you over the edge then the final one is the lost pages quest here uh just right outside of splinter tube where you turn in these war song pages nearly every person does this quest because you can go to the auction house you can get about 3.4k xp while leveling and a pre best item on the horde but if you didn't do it you could have all the pages in your inventory not be on the quest and then it would give you the 3.4k and that would be enough to ding you 27 with all these pre-quests you can also i haven't necessarily done this and i would won't know how to do this but possible pvp quests are the silver wing silver charm here i don't know if this yields xp since it yields uh, one gold and 20 silver i can take a guess that it might yield 1800 xp but i just simply don't know but that is another quest item you can have there is a flayed demon skin that you can get in deathless uh definitely look that up if you want to do it but it's kind of ridiculous um, in order to get that and then finally a warsong gulch pvp mark um, quest he doesn't show it but you can turn it in at any major city really um, that is another quest that you can just have the quest item in your bag and it does reward xp the first time you do it but similar to the wool cloth it's a one-time thing so it's very you know i would recommend saving that for later but you would get 27 if you do the very min maxi things that i said right there but anyway, guys, that is it for this video. That is the entire guide, the walkthrough, step by step. Um, if you wanted to turn in all these quests at max level, you would get about 50 gold. If that's something that is more appealing to you than doing this. But the advantages of getting to level 27 as Horde are insane. Because you'll be able to grind a lot more of RFK that you normally wouldn't be able to do at 25. And then the faster you can do RFK grinding, the faster you can go to Scarlet Monastery to grind. And the faster that you can get to level 40. And being level 40 and being able to go out in the world as soon as possible enables so many high-end farms, professions, some of the best money making can be done by hyper leveling very very quickly so that is the biggest reason to do this um if you don't need gold right now um, but i would definitely recommend picking a main character and preparing someone to do this on because it is very very powerful and can yield you a way more profit than the money right now but anyway guys that's it for this video please let me know what you think drop your comments down below if you think i missed anything if there's anything you think is better um definitely let it know it took me a while to produce this and i've been at it for quite a long time so i'm i hope you guys enjoy this and i'll see you next time have a great day Bye bye if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so, so much for watching. It truly means a lot to me. If you happen to find anyone that you know would also benefit from watching this video, please, please, please share it with them. It helps me out a ton and allows me to keep doing what I love every single day. And that is gaming and sort of helping people any way that I can. So finally, thank you so much, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Goodbye.